Roy, have you ever um, had a really toxic um, person or a, to- a toxic team in uh, on the on the project? Um, and if so, like, how did you deal with that? Because I think with like with 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 digital modeling, you can kind of just put on your earphones, get in the zone, and and you know yeah. deliver your piece, and that's it. But I think with with clay, it's it's arguably more important that everybody kind of is working together as a yeah in unison. I, I think that's established from the beginning, Sam. I I think um you know you get you get people walking around the studio with CVs if they need people they'll show us the CVs and, and it's word of mouth really. Do you know this bloke? What can he do? What's he like? You know, you get that all the time. It's, um, it's, it's word of mouth. And, and generally I've never met a bad, never, you never meet a bad apple. If you, um, if it's organized great from the beginning, it, generally the team go back that were on it previous. So everyone knows each other and you might not see each other for years. You might not see each other for, for five, eight years, say, and, and then you go back and it's like, you've never been away from each other. It's a, uh, it's, it's it's quite it's quite nice when that happens. I've never there's never been a bad apple. No, there's people that are better that stuff um, than other people. There's people like I said before that can um, highlight really quick, and there's people that can get covered from head to toe in clay just because they're they're knocking in volumes really quick. But um, if that's all established from the beginning of a program. I think you 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 set for a good team there. You set for a good team. Nobody, as long as you don't mind giving up your front end and going to work on an interior, or giving up that instrument panel and going and working on the rear end of a vehicle, it is. It, 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 I think it's better for the person to be more flexible and not to. Um, you know, earlier on I said about it's great to take ownership of a part, but um, if you could leave that part and then get back to it later on. Fantastic, but uh, as long as you don't mind doing what you're doing to create a, a fantastic item at the end of it, um, it, it's down to teamwork, Sam. It's down to teamwork. Well, you've 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 obviously been doing this for a long time, and I think that like one of the cool things, as you just said, is that you know, especially on the contracting circuit, um, over the years, you might not see somebody for um a period of time, and then and then see them uh in a new uh, on a new project in a new country in a new company etc cetera, etc cetera, which is obviously yeah. a really really great thing and historically you know you guys have made uh really really good money um but obviously you know that also all comes at a cost would you yeah. would you rather have had like so the- it's not about it's not about making good money it's it's um if you can't hold your own you i'm pretty certain you'd be out you'd be out within a week you know what i mean You've you've got to hold your own. You've got it is it is good money. Um, you don't you you maybe negotiate a salary, but then when work gets really when work ramps up and other companies want you to go back for something, you know you'll get a call and you and you it's a bit of a you're juggling you're juggling companies. You know oh god you you tell your boss you've been offered another job and it's on your doorstep and you know n- normally no one really wants to hold you back if it. it it's not so much the financial side of stuff as the um, as the longevity of the contract. If you've, if you've got a good job, you know you, you could be working for some. You could be working for Ford. You get you get a phone call from someone, and it's a bespoke customer job that's only going to be um, four months worth of work. You're not going to sacrifice um, the possibility of a of a twelve month contract, a twenty four month contract, just because um, someone wants some hypercar made you know it's um you're not you're not you're not chasing the money yeah we have we have made we haven't made good money but we've had to sacrifice leaving our families all week long you know we're doing 50 60 hours a week it's it's because of the sometimes it's because of uh, late decisions that we're the ones that have to get that model prepared everyone else can go home you know when they come back when they come back in the morning they're normally greeted with a with a with a gem in the studio that's dinoxed and dressed, and it, and it and it and you know what you like I said again, like I said earlier, it's got to look good because if you create if you create something that, that, that um a slight wonk or a kink or a highlight that's jagged all the way down the front or the body side, first thing people will say, and it'll be anyone, is. Hey, uh, 
that what a load of shit that is or you know it, that line doesn't blend itself into that line there that doesn't wrap around the corner it's um they're almost desperate everyone is desperate to find a fault in your model so that's the um what's the word that's the um that's what you're up against basically you've got to create the best thing you can 100 percent of the time 24 hours a day if needed because at, at six o'clock in the evening they might get a phone call and say they want you, someone's coming back tomorrow can we just and the modeler would never turn around and say no i'm going home it's always a yes and it gets presented it gets done one way or the other sam you don't want to is it making me sound like a hero making the team sound like a hero but um it's just the way it is it's not all the time i think it's expected of you but a lot of people will go home and you'll find yourself three o'clock in the morning it's a, there's a handful of clay modelers there, a couple of empty pizza boxes, and a, a model that's that's gleaming in the centre. It's quite quite a nice. Um, it's quite something to be proud of. Roy, I, I think that that's what I wanted to ask you is like wh whether you would have um, traded um, uh, that sort of um, you know contracting lifestyle for uh, security. The whole the last 20 or 30 years would you have rather have had like a permanent job during that time maybe a bit less um, money but never having to worry about it yeah it's crossed my mind quite a lot and i did it i went for it one time sam i, I did go for it i was offered a job at um paddington i was working in cranfield in 19 uh, 1998 1999 and nissan um had the opportunity of, of moving to paddington in London for this new studio in 2000 and I was a contractor in the Midlands uh, sorry I was a contractor at, at, at Milton Keynes and um, we went into Paddington as contractors and we were there on and off for about three or four years and I had the opportunity of taking a permanent uh, permanent position and I thought you know what this is great I probably had two or three kids I've got five kids now I probably had two or three kids by then and um you know, I thought the stability and stuff like that. I'd go for it, and I and I, I felt quite honoured to be asked, and I'd had the interview, and I took the permanent position, but um, I just couldn't. I just couldn't make ends meet, Sam. It was it was so good before. I I, I genuinely couldn't make ends meet, and uh, I was doing almost more hours than what I was doing as a contractor for half the salary. And nine times out of ten, I was working alongside contractors, which was kind of grinding me down a little bit thinking I know full well that I would have been the contractor there yeah. if uh, I hadn't taken this permanent position. And then you, you come across, you go places where, you know, things happen and they have to get rid of a whole bunch of staff and they lay off permanent members of staff that, that have been there for 10 years. It's no, there's no guarantee of a, there's no safe job. There's no safe job. But the thing is, that always, no, 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 carry on. I think they'll always need contractors because when the when the shit is, shit, is, shit is the fan, you get a bunch of blokes in that you can rely on that will, will turn out the um, turn out the goods at the end of the day. But the fuck up is Roy. Like I, I I don't know what your thoughts are, but I think like you know you 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 managed to catch some of uh, the good years, but like essentially the rates haven't changed all that much over the last I don't know ten fifteen years, and mm. and yet. Um, you know, it's got more difficult to contract, especially with IR35 and all that sort of stuff. I mean, you know, those are things that um, I I don't know. I, I, I think if I'd stayed in the UK, the, the game was always to, the, I, the goal was always to try and contract as long as possible. And I know that yeah. at like Jaguar and Land Rover, actually all the, all the OEMs in the UK, they had guys there that had been there for a long time and, and, and probably are still there. I mean, some of them have been made permanent now because of the law changes. But mm. um, like, you know, the, the landscape's a lot different now. Yeah, it, it has changed. It's, it's changed an awful lot, and you have to you have to do your research before you you um, sign any contract or anywhere. Sometimes, you know, if I work abroad, there might be different tax schemes in place there. But you you arrange that with the agent to provide you know certain things, living out allowances. Uh, you know, there's ways around stuff all the time. But um, generally, it works out. It works out all right, Sam. If you've got a good accountant, your accountant will only advise you to. Do this, do that, and and you make things work. Is it still is it still better to to contract than to be permanent? Um, I don't think you're tied in as much with with the politics when you're permanent. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I'm happy to contract. Um, financially, um, it's, you're better off. It's, there's no stability in that permanent position, as far as I'm concerned, with past experience of, of permanent members being, being laid off. When, when, when stuff goes wrong, you know, they, they, they limit their crew. So they get rid of people. It's, um, I don't think it's a safe bet taking a permanent position nowadays. Right. If you've got a skeleton crew, to, uh, I can only assume that's to save to save money. Um, when the when things ramp up, the skeleton crew ain't man enough to produce three or four vehicles. You know, it's, there's not enough staff to um, to create that many uh, that much want. And tell me something. What is the what is the landscape look like for you in terms of working in Europe now? I mean, do you know has it changed a lot after Brexit and IR thirty five and all that sort of stuff? Um, no, it hasn't. It hasn't changed. There's been new rules and regs, which mean you probably have to sign on at the at the town hall or or to register as a citizen of France or Germany or or, or Sweden. But um, currently, um, you know, there's they're calling out for contract modelers in in abroad, but it's Corona that's ruining ruining um, ruining it at the moment. It's quite tricky um, to get out to another country because you've got to have so many tests. You have tests when you get to that country. You, if you flew out on a Monday, you probably after waiting for your results from that country, you probably wouldn't be starting work till the Wednesday. Before all the Corona stuff, you could go out Monday, come back Thursday night. You could come home Friday morning. Um, uh, I think with IR IR thirty five or labour leasing or um, living out allowances, there's all cushions for everything else, but it's just. It's only Corona at the moment that seems to be stopping people from from the UK for sure for uh, travelling abroad. Okay. You know, I was I was offered a job in Sweden for a uh, start date was the 11th of January. It was just a logistical nightmare to get out there. I was chuffed. I haven't worked for so long. I I, I finished work last March. I've been off at home since last. I've had 11 months at home. It's been um, tough uh, financially, but it's been nice. Uh, that I've I've never spent this much time with my with my family. I've never spent so much time um, with my kids. Um, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed every every second of it. And when the world gets spinning again, and we start going off early, four o'clock, five o'clock out in the morning, coming back at seven o'clock in the evening, um, it will just become that that routine again. But um, it's I don't I don't um, I don't think it's harder to work abroad Sam no than it ever was before it's just corona at the moment that's um, mucking it up a bit okay uh Roy I I am um, on a, um with regards to your personal interests I have heard about your infamous uh, airstream cam- camper as well oh I've tried to keep that one a secret who's told you that <laughs> i can't say <laughs> no that's uh <laughs> yeah i didn't know I, I never i never told anyone about that i didn't want to sound too gypsy <laughs> <laughs> yeah so as far as i'm concerned sam no one knows about that but, uh, yeah that's probably poor isn't it <laughs> yeah maybe yeah he did me a nice he did me a nice watercolor uh bless his heart uh of that um yeah i i i'm I'm not i've got five children we go to the south of france not in the caravan we go to the south of france every year we take a nice holiday um but prior to the holidays we would have um well i think we're fortunate is the good word to say that we've always stayed in touch with my eldest she's 18 now uh we've always stayed in touch with a maternity group from a baby's age um, so we've made great friends there and we started camping, going out camping with the kids, um, Christ, 15, 16 years ago. And we had a 10 and it was, you know, it's just a nightmare. Things got, family got bigger. We had tons of shit to lug about. And, um, we ended up buying, ended up wanting a caravan. I didn't want to buy a caravan. I didn't want to buy a caravan. No one in my family's got a caravan. I never wanted to go down this, um, this cream rectangle on the back of a car trick. You know what I mean? I no. didn't like it. I didn't like it. So, um, yeah, we opted for an Airstream. And we Where did it you up. find it? Oh, we shopped about. My, my wife and I, we were looking online years ago at these tiny little things. They were called Bambies. They were sort of 16 feet long, little aluminium 
beautiful little rockets and uh they're just nice they're just nice things they look uh look better from the outside than they actually are in real life but uh as the, as the time went on i'm saying we had the, the family grew uh, by the time we sort of wanted one the bambi was no good it wouldn't have got us all in so we um yeah we bit the bullet and we went for a whopper we went for this um it's called an overlander twin it's 27 feet long it's a uh, a beautiful it's an absolute beauty sam did you I'm buy surprised. From, huh did you get it from america no i got it from a guy in bristol who bought two he was a he was an events guy and he bought one for him and one for his wife and i think they set up marquees for, for big events and um he lived in that and she lived in her one and uh they <laughs> he retired couldn't, he couldn't stand her one wasn't big enough for her yeah, well, he'd be he'd be somewhere, and she'd be somewhere. I mean, these were big these were big events. They owned a big marquee company, and I think they did like um, I think they set up like the pyramid stage at Glastonbury. They were big big timers. Jesus. They were uh, they were big timers. They lived in they lived in Bristol, and and you know what? We chopped about. We looked about, and then this one came up, and uh, it's weird because I've never I've never told anyone about this. This is strange. So this is this is got to be Paul Howes again. Bastard Maybe. Paul Howes. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so we went for it. We went for it, and I don't regret it now because it's an absolute, it's a beautiful bit of kit, and um, I haven't bought it as an investment. It seems like um, the way it's going, people are uh, are camping more than ever, and uh, I've been approached by a few people that want to buy it for burger vans, and they want to buy it for cocktail cocktail bars at, at weddings and stuff like that, but um, I'm just going to hang on to it. I like it. It's, it's a, She's called Betty, and she's a beauty. And how, it fits all five of you in there. No problem. Seven. 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 Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's got two sets of bunk beds. It's all nine it's all nineteen sixties. It's it's all in teal and, and like cherry. It's it's quite um it's quite a it's quite a thing to look at. I mean it's definitely nineteen sixties, but um it it's great. I didn't want to modernise it. I didn't want to fit it out with you gotta be careful, you know, before you know it you're you're pulling along sort of four tons of stuff behind your car so um you've got to be careful how you kit it out and we kitted it out correct we've done our research and uh she's a she, i love it a bit so i love it more every day sam it's a beautiful thing and one day i'll get her polished one day i'll get that mirror polished on her beautiful yeah um and your other one of your other enthusiasms apparently is uh art deco is that right yeah i like it i like my art deco I I think I I quite like my art deco. I quite like my minimalist stuff. Um, yeah, I've always been into it. I've always been into it. I don't know why. No one else in my family is, and um, you know I've got a bit of it going on downstairs. I've got my my study and I've got my lounge, which um, sort of stays clean. We've got another lounge. We're fortunate enough. We've got another lounge dining room out the back, and and that's that sort of um, gets treated in a different in a different era, but. Um, no, I like my. I love my Art Deco. Who don't love Art Deco? I, I don't, Who don't I, love geometric shapes, Sam? Come on. No, fair enough. Fair enough. There's a, I, there's a beautiful theatre in London, and I can't fucking remember it for for the life of me. But I went to see a a, a gig there, and it was also it was like stepping onto the set of um, Scarface. But it was like yeah. proper, like yeah, Art Deco theater is beautiful. But unfortunately, yeah. I can't think of it now. But no, I will. I'll get back to you on that. There's tons of it. There's tons of it. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I like it. Um, I'm, I'm, I like it, and I and I make a few nice purchases. It's funny, you know, these these lights here. These are these are. There was a cinema being demolished, um, in Bolton, and there was it was an Art Deco cinema, and I, oh, the, the amount of stuff they were they were auctioning off. Um, there was these huge, like four foot wide, clam um, wall sconces that were, uh, you know, I was bidding on everything. Um, I was fortunate enough to get these two, this one and this one, and oh. they're all original. And I, and I, I you know what, um, sets the room off nice. If you kit it out, I've got these pictures up, but they can't be seen from the rest of the house. My wife's quite adamant that um, she don't mind them going up, but, um, as long as you can't really see them unless you come into this room. It's um nice. I like it. Um, I uh, Roy, as we like, kind of uh, draw things to a close. I mm -hmm. I wanted to um. Do you do you do you have any advice 
for young kids wanting to become clay modelers as everyone th- like there's a general consensus or th- uh, thought that you know clay's on its way out and it's it's dead no i think if you get the opportunity to go into a studio as a clay modeler um you've just got to be keen you've got to get you've got to get stuck in you've got to not be shy um you know everyone you know they seem desperate to find fault in everything all the time and there's this uh, um feeling that you can't you know you if you mill something out it's perfect um you've got to blast in you've got to be you've got to blast in volumes quick you've got to show something quick um you know get to the theme because again it you're you're um you're cracking in something that there's no data for. So you want it to be good. And if you if you get that into your, if that's the mindset, you've got to make something shit hot. You've absolutely got to nail this thing and you've got to work at it until everyone says, you know what, that's fucking awesome. That's a great job. You know, you don't want people coming in and saying, that's a load of shit. You know, it's camp. <laughs> it's, uh, you've got to crack, you've got to, you've got to work hard. You've got, um, like I say, Suggest uh, suggest um, ideas to be able to to get to that end product. You know, don't be shy. Don't just say yeah all the time, and and don't put your own feeling into it. You've got to just, um, you know, we're all good at what we do, Sam. We're all we're all good. Um, we all know what looks good, and we're all we're all good at criticizing stuff. And um, I think when you're in a when you're in a room with fifty or a hundred people in it. You, you you know damn well you've got to knock out something shiny at the end of it that's got to look good. So yeah, if you're up and coming and you you're going to a studio, don't sit back there. Don't don't be afraid to ask anything. You've got to. Um, everyone's human at the end of the day, and don't don't cow down to the boss when he comes in. You know, ask him what he thinks. Ask him, you know, or suggest you want to do this because I think um, they they want to hear your they want to hear your voice, Sam. They want to hear your voice. Roy, the the uh, don't forget the modelers. Where does that come from? That bloody comes from a, a, a friend of mine that will remain nameless. Put a bloody great big thank you out to the team of a car that we did, uh, without mentioning any of the clay blokes. So I I hit straight back with this. Don't forget the modelers. We're, we're the first run of the ladder. We're the first part of that process of showing something. And, um, I, I, you know, I know we're appreciated and, um, uh, it's, it's funny. It's, just, it was a bit tongue in cheek when I, when I wrote, when I sent it out for the first time, but, um, the, the modelers are there to show the designers how good their, their renderings are. We're, we're their hands at the end of the day and we can finesse and we can put that model in to 3d, which has, has never been done before. It's, um, I think it's, we're, we're with the, uh, I think we're one of the most important roles of that um, creativity. So I got a bit of space on there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, how, long, we, how long ago? How long has it been going for? When did you start that? Not not long. I think we've got under enough skin. <laughs> I, I, I was I was pumping it out like a thousand times a day at the beginning. Dude, I because I was like, who the fuck is this arsehole? Like, I just, I was like, I am a fucking modeler. Like, I, I get it. Yeah. Like, thank you. And and it was just like, and and, and then I would I would respond to you, and you your yeah. response would just be like, don't forget the modelers. And I was like, I fucking haven't forgot the modelers. Right? And you were like, don't forget the modelers. You know what? I've I've blasted everyone with that. Absolutely <laughs> nailed. I have nailed everyone, and I get the same comments of what you just said all the time back. And I just hit back. Don't forget about this. I just hit back. It's, um, <laughs> I quite like it. I quite, I quite like being anonymous. It's, uh, it, it, You're not it, fucking I'm, anonymous. I'm, not now. I'm not. No. It's, um, <laughs> I like. I, no. I just want to put out there that I think how important the clay part is in the whole process, Sam. It's, um, it's a very important thing. I, it can't be. It can't be replaced with a machine. If the machine comes out and they invent a slicking machine. Then uh, we might have it, but um, you know when you get when you get a milled model coming out, uh, or a, or a, it's very rarely um, nodded that you know what that's the one we're going to go with. If you're gonna, it, um, it, you know, it, it always goes back to 
having that big review in the morning and there's no time to load up and remill that model and clean it up again. It's calling that bunch of blokes that are, that are, that are working over there and they'll put something in. You know, it's, 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 it's never a problem. You've got four or five blokes that, in a studio that can chuck a load of clay on it and create that that changed um, that changed uh, request much quicker than than um, than you can by loading it up, milling it, waiting overnight, going in there, cleaning it up, and then I say standing back, having a look at it, and then saying, "No, let's just tweak it a little bit more," which means loading it up three days later, having another um, another remill again. I just I just think um, I don't think we're a dying breed. I don't think we're a dying breed at all. Sam, I agree that technology's moved on and it, it, it's helped us out. It's helped everybody out. The fact that you can, you can create something, you can blend two models together and have a horrible 50, 60 mil offset, but you can say to a modeler, jump on there and try and blend that in and spline that through. You know, you can do it a lot quicker by hand than you can on a tube. No disrespect to the thousands of guys on the tube. What you do, I can't do. And, and I, and I love it when, when you present stuff and they say, oh, this is what we want to achieve. But, um, you know, 3D, you can't you can't VR a surface in. You, you can't have it in front of you and walk around it and, and touch it and feel it uh, uh, as well as you can with a bloke who can just be told, you know, can you can you pinch that crease or can you just knock that fender down 20 mil or just push that fender in 5 mil? You know, I, again, it goes back. It's funny. You can have blokes. I've worked with blokes that... Um, I can't say names because it makes them look really bad. But I've worked with guys that have said, can you knock that um, fender down 20 mil? You know, it's not quite right at the moment. Yet, I know full well there's a hard point. We have a book of hard points like you do. We have a book of hard points that we know we can't bypass. So uh, I say to the bloke, we can't knock it down or let's just do it and see what it looks like. I've done, I've done stuff years ago, Sam, for this guy. And and I mean, it was like he said, oh, "It's just not working. It needs it needs to come down twenty mil." Um, he went off. He went home. I didn't do it because it was it was going to fail big time for engineering. I never did it. And he came in the next day and he said, "That looks so much better." And I never did it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I felt great. It's actually worked in my favour. You know, I'm not trying to pinch the design from him. It's just. Um, there's some things you have to hold your ground on because you know you're going to be going round and round and round in circles um, trying to please everyone. It's, um, it's a funny old game. Very I good. love it. I love it. You still love it, Roy? I love it every day, Sam. I haven't done it for 11 months. I can't wait to get back into it. But it's nice. It's, it's nice to be passionate about something. But, um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's um, 10,000 units or three units coming out at the end of the day. You your heart and soul into something because you want it to look nice. It's um, I say it doesn't matter what the, what badge is on the front or the back. It's the team that make it what it is. And um, if it comes out into production, it's lovely to see it drive past you in the street. It's lovely to um, bore people with um, telling everyone how many mil that wheel arch flat is, or uh, how many how many nodules are on the gripper plate on the back of a step down from a transit van. It's uh, it's it's. Uh, it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I've never lost. I've never lost interest in it. I've never lost interest in it. Roy, that was absolutely fucking brilliant. So thank you, dude. That was that was amazing. I really, really, really enjoyed talking to you. You're uh, fucking I hilarious. hope. I hope I did all right. I hope I didn't embarrass myself too much. <laughs> oh, you <you're> did great. <laughs> Again, I, I've got to thank my lad. How long have we been talking for? I don't know, an hour, hour and 15 yeah. maybe. Yeah. So I've got to thank my boy because um, he has uh, sacrificed Call of Duty so I can borrow these bad boys. Well, we need to we need to give him a shout out. Is he on Instagram? Harry, no, I won't let him. Good. He might be, but he good. hasn't told me. This is good enough. <laughs> Harry, you're a star. Thanks for your help. That's Harry, that. you're a hero. Thank you, Harry. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, Sam.